finding the SUV market is not that difficult when you put, well, Range Rover on the front of the hood. Hey, welcome to this edition of Road Warrior. I'm your host, Grant Robertson. Now, when you see this silhouette, you pretty much know you're in the premium market for SUVs. Now, behind me is the 2016 Range Rover SE. So let's dive inside to see exactly what it delivers. Some manufacturers try to reinvent the SUV wheel, but really Range Rover sticks with the basics, pretty much taking Safari right to the urban jungle. What I like here, the old box design, really delivering all that interior space, and pretty much knowing from the silhouette that this is a premium SUV. Now what I like here on this particular model is the two-tone like effect. Really body color in the lower portion with kind of a smoky like dark exterior up above, really giving that two-tone like effect. Now as you sweep down, again, nothing curved Curvaceous, pretty much straight lines, a nice midline right here, just a little bit of chisel. And what I like here is what I call the gills. This nice kind of accent right here. Now on the sport model, that's more of a port-like style. Here, more vertical lines. In some cases on SUVs, they can really overdo it when it comes to their front end. Too much prowess and just too much grill warfare. Now here on the Range Rover, keeping it somewhat straightforward following the minimalistic design all the way from the back to the front. Now body color pretty much all the way around with minimal contrast when it comes to the grille insert. Now we have plenty of airflow right through the middle here and down low. Now the headlights nice and stylized and horizontal. A lot of SUVs are taking theirs and making them vertical here on the sides. Instead going with more of a menacing look that sweeps around even to the fenders. Now for safety, we do have added sensors up front, really allowed to get into those tight spots and alerts you when you're behind the wheel. To be expected, this vehicle has smart key system. You're pretty much gonna keep this in your pocket and forget about it. Now you can tell the vehicle is locked because these are gonna swing in when it is locked, swing out when you open the doors. Now it's great, pretty much go to any door, put your hand right here. It's gonna automatically unlock, give you quick access. Now depending on how you set it up on the inside, this will either unlock all the doors, just one, tons of combinations. Now one thing about a premium vehicle, I like for it to be totally secure. One way to do that is really dark in the back area, and we'll talk about that tonic cover in just a second. But one air, other area, very crucial, is the gas fill up. Now typically on a premium vehicle, this is gonna be locked with the vehicle, unlocked when it's not. Now unfortunately, this one's unlocked all the time. Even worse, it has the old cap. So we're around to the business end of the Range Rover talking about the cargo area. First thing that starts off good is the huge rear hatch. Now it's pretty much straightforward back here. Hasn't changed really much over the decades. Now this nice floor is gonna give you a little bit more aerodynamics, otherwise squared off. Now as for the look, body color all the way around, a little bit of chrome accents, a little bit of change in the adornments, and you're gonna notice this rubber fascia down low, really helping with the scrapes and dings. And you're gonna find that all the way around, except on the wheel wells. Now, one thing I like about this rear spoiler is it hides the operation of the windshield wiper. It used to be bulky on a lot of SUVs here. Instead, they've tucked it up here when it needs it, swings down, tucks out of the way, making a lot more sleek back here. Now, one thing about premium SUVs that makes it great is the operation of the rear hatch. Now what's great, it's right here on the fob. Simply press the button and it's gonna to rise to the occasion. First thing, the upper hatch, then the lower tailgate. Once that opens, you're gonna find kind of a hidden little niche here. Nice rubber mat, really allows everything to stay in place. Now it's great with the tonneau cover, really adds a lot of security. No one's really gonna know what you have hidden back here. In this day and age of Christmas right now and all the shopping, throw your stuff in here, no one's gonna know about it. Looking a little bit deeper at the tonneau cover, one thing to talk about is a lot of them are retractable, actually pull into place a little bit more flimsy. Instead, this one's rigid, actually creates more like a shelf, put some items up here, almost gives you a two-tier system. Another thing to look at is the operation. As you can tell, if you don't do it the right way, it causes some scuff marks here. What people are doing actually lifting here. Instead, you actually have to press here, push back, then tumble it back. That's gonna allow you to have a lot more vertical space here when you need it. When you don't, simply tumble it back forward and lock it in place. Looking at the cargo floor back here, what you're gonna notice is heavy rubber mat. Now this is gonna be found here and also in front of each seating position. That's gonna protect the carpet for one, but back here primarily holds everything in place, especially if you're putting muddy gear back here, protect the carpet, because right here, that's gonna get damaged real quickly, and also it's a slick surface. It's gonna sling things around. This gripped and held everything quite nicely. Now looking at the system back here, it's obviously an upper hatch and a lower tailgate. 
this really swings out wide, gives you a nice seated position should you want to go to the football game and hang out back here. Now it is a two-fold system, pretty much meaning you're going to press the button here, it's going to rise, press this, it's going to tumble down. Now if you use the key fob for that, it obviously is intuitive, knows which way to do it. When it comes to Range Rover, you can take this vehicle about anywhere you want to go, and it comes to its renowned height traveling system. Pretty much take it rock crawling, take it up higher, want to get an easy, take it down low. Now what you see here is access height, pretty much a nice squatty positioning to give you easy ingress. And the way that works, we had it in the automatic system, pretty much put it in park. It's going to lower about an inch and a half. Once you open the door handle, go lower another half inch, giving you about two inches lower for ease of ingress. Now, when you get in the vehicle and start to travel, get about nine miles per hour, it's going to get back to normal height. Now, of course, if you want to go off road, you can take it even to different heights, giving you a lot more uh, lift off the ground and easier travel across the rough stuff. A couple other things to talk about really is the safety back here. You have backup sensors and a backup camera. Now where the sensors come into play is really granting quicker access. The way that works is you get up close to the vehicle. It's going to sense you're here. Stand for just a second near the bumper. It's going to know you're there. It's going to activate the rear hatch without you even touching a button or getting close enough. That's going to allow you to keep your hands full of items, throw them inside, close it up and go on. While the outside keeps nostalgia of the past, the inside definitely is an old school. Really starting with the room for five people, plenty of leg room all the way around. Now up front, you're going to have traditional caption shares with the dial specific armrests we've always come to love. Really allow you to articulate these arms into any position you prefer. Now when you look at the comfort up here, nice comforting leather, just a little bit of wrapping all the way around. Now these are heated seats up front, really easy to use with a push button on the dash. Now these aren't cooled seats because I think those would compromise the plushness of this leather. Looking at the entertainment system right at the center of the dash, this is definitely the future, nothing resembling the past. Now what you're gonna notice, this is somewhat like an iPad. No raised buttons, but more right there on the surface. Now this is gonna give you a home screen option, a lot of other different uh, quick shortcuts. Now what I like is this is the quadrant system. Now you see this on the Jag and of course Land Rover. Now this is gonna allow you to really get into the specific quadrant you want, simply press it. Now one thing I did notice is the system lags just a hair. It takes you just a second for it to respond. Now what I would also like is for this to be a little bit more colorful. One thing I really like is on the Chrysler vehicles. That is a lot more colorful and dramatic. Now the one thing they don't do well is the quadrant system like you see here. Now we did use the navigation, work quite well. They do even have the hot spot and you have the climate controls right up here. Now if you swing down, you'll see that you have the climate controls really right front and center. So using it on the screen, probably not going to be the go-to choice. Instead, using these is real easy. Now the heated seats we talked about earlier, simply right here on both sides, press it, dial it in. Now once you press it again, you'll see that you have dual zones up front, really each occupant getting their specific temperature. All the other controls, really straightforward. Between the front occupants, you're going to find a really wide separation housing all the operation and of course dual cup holders. Now what's great is you can take these out making cleaning a lot easier. Now one thing to note, there is a power supply, but I don't like the fact that it's near all the moisture potential right here. Now just in case you want to make everything look a lot sleeker, press right here, it's going to hide it away. Now if you look over here, what you're going to find is the 8-speed automatic transmission selector. Now that does tuck away when the vehicle is off comes up when it powers on. That's going to make it really hard to steal this vehicle if you don't have the key. Now the operation for off-road prowess is right here, the good old dial select. Now what I like is for a novice like me, really has nice indicators of what you're selecting, making it so much easier. Now you do have the manual ride control right here. That's great if you want to kind of show off like I do. Get to a stoplight, make it go higher, lower it whenever you want. Looking a little bit deeper at these buttons, you do have the ride control I talked about, and you do have this automatic on off. Now what that does is turn the vehicle off when you are stopped, like at a stoplight or something. Now that can be annoying and a little bit startling as the vehicle shuts on and off. I like to turn that off when I really don't need it. For the center console, you have a nice elbow support if the armrests aren't enough. Now inside, nice deep storage, and I like the fact that you have two USB connections, and they really tell you exactly what they're going to do when they're hooked up. You also have an added power supply and an auxiliary connection. 
On the dash, there's going to be no old school analog, but a huge digital display, both for the tachometer and speedometer. Now, one thing to note, you can select for the speed limit to be displayed right there on the speedometer, giving you updated information to make sure you kind of keep the laws in check. Now, there is information in the center, and what you'll notice, you have the entertainment right there when you need it. Now, even better is the heads up display. Now, it illuminates there on the windshield, giving you more of a bird's eye view as you're going down the road. No reason to look down at the gauges at all. In some vehicles, your steering wheel can look more like a steering wheel for a Boeing 747. Not the case here, just minimalistic with the good old cruise control on the right and the various functions there to the left for the stereo and phone settings. On the doors, one thing you're going to notice is kind of a weird system. More or less, you're going to have the memory controls for the seating down low and the actual window controls up high. Now, to me, I typically keep my arm down here. It makes it a lot easier to actually reach the uh, window controls. Instead, you actually have to put your arm up here, making it just a little bit of a learning curve. Now, if you could switch these, maybe possible, but I do note that this is a lot of controls to put in this lower armrest, so naturally it makes sense that they're going to go up here. Throughout the vehicle, you have tons of LED lighting really illuminating this vehicle. Now, what you're going to notice right here is there's no buttons to actually turn the lighting on. Instead, it's nice touch sensitive. Now, right here in the middle, it's going to turn all the vehicle's lights on. Turn them on, turn them off. Nice good old tap light. Now, even better is there's one both for the front driver and passenger. Simply press it, turns it on. Now, that's really great. Makes everything sleek. And the same operation can be found throughout the vehicle. The Range Rover has dual glove compartments up front, nice and hidden, and no handles to be found. Instead, electronic releases. Press here, that's going to open the upper compartment. Press here, it's going to do the lower one. Now, the Range Rover delivers, again, room for five people, and you can argue that a vehicle this big, well, should deliver a third row, but that's just not the bill for this vehicle. Now, what you're going to find is plenty of comfort across the board back here, really three separate niches for the individuals. Even right here in the middle, nice sculpting for added leg room. Now, what's great is if you want to transform this from, well, people to cargo, it's made fairly easy. Simply pull the handle right here, and it's going to tumble forward. Now, one little hint, I did actually move my seat just a hair forward to accommodate this headrest. Otherwise, you're going to have to remove that. Now, one thing to note, with all the cargo space back there, it's highly unlikely this is really going to transform to anything other than people. You can say the pilot has all the power, but back here, well, it is the backseat driver. Now, it starts really with the climate control. What's down here is enough control for the side passengers to have their own temperature and they have their own vent speed. Simply turn the knob. Now, one thing to note is that changes the airspeed for the entire vehicle. Now, what's even better is right here between the back occupants. This huge center console giving you some storage here, nice elbow support, and dual cup holders. Even better is it's positioned quite high to give you a lot of support when you need it. That does for this edition of Road Warrior. I test drive behind the wheel of the 2016 Range Rover HSC. Now, it delivers that typical silhouette with great premium interior. Now, it has a lot of cargo, decent horsepower, and of course, that off road prowess. Now, as always, I'd like to thank you for watching this edition of Road Warrior. Keep both hands on the wheel and eyes straight ahead.